Ben, what are you doing in there? I briefly glanced up at the I briefly glanced up at the door where my wife stood on the other side. I'll just be another minute. There was no point in answering her question. She knew what I was doing, I'm sure. She didn't like it. And she didn't understand because she wanted me to move on. My eyes slid back down to my phone where they continued to watch the tiny screen for another four minutes. I had scoured the internet for months looking for the rest of the trial, but all I could find was this aggressively edited six-minute segment that had been televised by a current affair. I'd seen the video so many times, I knew every detail of every second. But still, I watched. Because I needed the answer. The camera was currently focused on the jury. They were all leaning forward and concentrating on the testimony of a forensics expert. The camera then slid over to the witness stand, where Dr. Felmore talked about the decomposition of Andrew's body. And the state he must have been in when the dog walker had discovered it the previous May. Felmore then walked over to the overhead projector, tapped a stack of slides on the table, and straightened them, then slid the top slide off the stack and placed it on the projector. A graphic photo of Andrew's naked body suddenly assaulted the court as the entire room gasped. A current affair had blurred out the photo, but I remembered what was on it. My poor little Andrew. It had been my job to protect him. They were right to be horrified. Listening to a monotone medical expert drone on about the graphic abuse of a five-year-old child was much different than seeing its effects firsthand. The doctor explained the slides without emotion, pointing out the countless abrasions, bruises, and other fractures. He spoke about the ultimate manner of death, strangulation, and showed the court how the handprints on Andrew's neck matched perfectly with the defendant's. Then he turned the projector off and began to speak about his presumed time of death. The camera pulled back at this point to show my family, quietly crying. And then, finally, it panned over to the defendant's table, the boy sitting beside his lawyer looking downright bored. He flipped a pencil back and forth between his fingers and sighed loudly every few seconds. This was the monster I wanted to kill. He seemed to feel that the camera was on him because he suddenly turned, looked straight into the camera, and smiled. It was a smug intelligent smile and it was as if he wasn't afraid of the consequences of as if he believed that it had all been worth it and in the end i supposed he was right the boy had been sentenced incarceration until his majority and then another seven years after that it was nothing i knew better than anyone that it was less than nothing i looked over at the gun i had hidden under the sink and now sat on the bathroom counter begging me for justice was too good of a death for a monster like that. It'd be so easy. It'd be too easy. Didn't justice require more? A manner of death similar to what my little brother had suffered all those years ago. Andrew had endured horrors no human should suffer days of it. I looked back down at the tiny screen and watched the last few seconds of the video. The boy had suddenly sat up at rapt attention as some of the makeshift torture devices he'd built were brought out and placed on a table near the jury. My family was escorted from the courtroom, and a current affair ended the segment there, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter because I remember what had happened next. The detective held up each one of the devices for the jury to examine, and I'd rocked hard back and forth in my seat next to my lawyer giddy with pride at my gruesome creations. Valerie knocked again. Ben, are you coming to bed or not? I was contemplating a much more important question. The only one that mattered. In truth, I knew how to kill a monster. I glanced over at the revolver on the counter. That part was easy. But the problem was more complex than that, because... Because how do you kill a monster when it's inside of you? Hey there, everyone who's listening on YouTube, or those of you who are listening on the podcast. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. 
And before you head out for the night, I just wanted to let you know about a couple of things. Without you, the show doesn't take place. So, if you guys would like to support the show, or if you guys would like to get your hands on a couple of cool little things whenever new things come out, check out patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And any support that you guys show, I really appreciate it. So everyone who's already donated to the Patreon, I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. I thank you so much for that. If you guys are looking for more Creepypasta Storytime, there's a new video that's uploaded to this channel or uploaded to the podcast every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday now. You can be able to get more from me at facebook.com slash mrcreepypasta or on Twitter at mrcreepypasta and then the number zero. Thanks so much for listening, kids, and for your support. And sweet dreams.